Mi hijo. Ajuel, on y no ir, piaj. Mojas la jame. Que fue un posagua. Aquí me maja un posagua. Y pan, mahuisli. Mahuisli. Kinech, la toli majasi. Kinech, la toli majasi. Kinech, majasi. In Chihualis Ichbia, Kichihuas in Nononquat, Tlen Oan Kichihuah Ashqualik, Tlen Oan Kichihuah Pinahuistik, Tlen Oan Kichihuah Mamaoki, Jaye Juan in Motlahel Mayahuinke, Jaye Juan. In Islahatinke, Kaye Juan Islahatinke, Mohat Lahame, Kafayo Posawa, Akimo Makayo Posawa. Y ese... I must apologize for my absence, my relations. As many of you know, I had been in the hospital for close to a month and a half, fighting for my life. While in the hospital, an unrelenting, shameless, bigoted, professional smear and cancel campaign with reckless disregard for truth, integrity, dignity, or basic human decency was launched against me by two spiteful middle-aged white women seeking retribution out of jealousy and a woman in Europe seeking her own 15 minutes of fame whom had collectively got together and anonymously with egregious ill intent claimed to be three young indigenous women groomed by Iron Jacket to the public and a clueless and cultureless TikTok Indian in California from the tribe TikTok, from the lands of TikTok Titlan, claiming to be a Chichimechat, defending women as a shameless attempt to bring attention, likes, and followers to his Instagram and TikTok pages, who not only does not know or follow any of the traditions or speak any of the languages of the many cultures he purports to represent, but could not even pronounce the word Sholo Isquintli in his own video. And before my health would enable me to make a video to respond publicly to these outrageous and fraudulent and ignorant claims being manufactured against me, these same individuals leading this smear and cancel campaign using fake accounts and troll bot programs were able to fraudulently report all of my videos in mass as hate speech, forcing IG to disable my account so that only their warped narrative and wild false claims and flat out lies could exist in the public forum solely, unchecked and unchallenged. There is nothing lower than a sexual predator other than a man or woman who is willing to fabricate and spread false claims of rape or sexual predatism or pedophilia on another as an attempt to destroy another's life, name, character, and put one's life in danger out of jealousy, vindictiveness, or for attention. Now, the woman responsible for the initial construction 
manufacture, and management of the online smear and cancel campaign against me, whom was initially anonymously publicly claiming to be multiple underage indigenous girls groomed by Iron Jacket, with supposed knowledge of many more, is in actuality a middle-aged white woman who lives in Phoenix, Arizona, named Angela Morell. Angela Morell works as the digital marketing coordinator for one of the country's top digital marketing firms based out of Boulder, Colorado, that specializes in social media PR campaigns and has coordinated social media PR or public relations or propaganda campaigns for some of the world's largest Fortune 500 companies. The width and breadth of these shameless and dishonorable acts of these individuals knows no bounds. From making shameless false claims of sex rings and pedophilia to these middle-aged white women fraudulently, anonymously, publicly claiming to be an underage or indigenous girls who were groomed to be part of a sex cult, false accusations of rape to doctoring screenshots and messages, using paid troll bot programs, and falsely reporting videos as hate speech to get my account taken down, fraudulently, publicly humiliating, and anonymously sending death threats and harassing people and their families whom are attempting to help me, making flat-out racist, bigoted, and false claims that I'm white or Caucasian and a fraud because of my light skin and hazel eyes, claiming that I am wealthy and from Pennsylvania or Florida, or even seeking an offering to pay women online to make false statements against me that they could screenshot and post publicly or even interview substantiating their claims that I am white or that I am running a sex ring or sex cult or was sexually predatory around them or their daughters. All doing this while I was fighting for my life and unable to defend myself. The fraudulent claims that I am white was purportedly proven by pictures of two mugshots where I was entered into two separate county jails databases as a Caucasian white inmate. What these individuals failed to let people know is that these two county jails, these individuals chose to use mugshots from Charlotte County Jail and Johnson County Jail only register inmates as black or white. And since I am not black, I was entered as white. Here are some pictures of other inmates from Charlotte County Jail and Johnson County Jail that were as well entered as white. They're clearly not white or Caucasian. The other supposed proof of the claim of me being white or Caucasian was that I once had a Christian or Anglican name. I did once have a Christian or Anglican name. In fact, I've had two of them. One was given to me by my biological mother at birth, whom was a non-traditional mestizo woman from El Sereno, and another legally put onto me by the two individuals whom adopted me. Around a decade ago, when me and many other traditional language-speaking people and groups representing their traditional clans and bands as dignitaries and diplomats occupied the Justice Department building in D.C. and served the head of the Justice Department a complaint of genocide, opening up a case in international court against the United States. We all cut up our U.S. driver's licenses and federal BIA or IRA tribal IDs and unilaterally withdrew from all treaties and contracts with the United States, rejecting as well our Anglican or Christian names, and since that point on, only used our rightful, traditionally given names and our free and independent international IDs, which were granted in international court. This is no secret and common knowledge to anyone who knows me personally and something I've spoken about publicly on many occasions. These individuals as well took the names and pictures of the two individuals from Florida whom had adopted me and their family members as an attempt to substantiate the claim that I'm white and from Florida or Pennsylvania. Both these claims are untrue. I do not know who my biological father is, but my biological mother, a mixed woman of Chichimeja descent, whom grew up in El Sereno, gave me up at a young age while living in Bull Heights. And because of this, I grew up in several different places and living as a runaway most of my childhood. 
Spending most of my childhood homeless and on the run with other runaways, squatters, cross punks, and fugitives in Boyle Heights, squatting under the 6th Street Bridge or between East 6th Street and Hollenbeck Park in Los Angeles County. And when the state will find me being sent back to Tampa, Florida, living in the back of a mechanic shop on North Franklin Street, next to the Perry Harvey Park in Hillsborough County with the family that had adopted me. Later on, a small town in Southern Florida they had moved to, which I cannot recall because I did not spend much time there. As soon as I was taken back to Florida, I ran away and was once again living on the run in various squat houses, including the infamous Hoople Mansion with other runaways, crust punks, squatters, and fugitives in Fort Myers, Florida and Lee County, as well as three years living on the land on the Texas-Mexico border in Big Bend with my biological mother's grandmother, my beloved Wacy Sintli, my great-grandmother, and my granduncle, the last traditional language-speaking matriarch and patriarch of my matrilineal Pinanteja and Colteoteja clans, who during my three years living with them attempted to raise me traditionally, teaching me the whole of our clan's traditional oral history, songs, traditions, customs, dances, our clan's traditional silver work and copper work, our clan's traditional bow and arrow making, traditional hunting, trapping, and food preservation, and the whole of the Chichimechayot, the original instructions which allowed us to live in our beloved Siwach Titlan, our homeland, in a good way, as well as attempting to teach me all three of our clan's dialects, including an Udo Aztec and Southern Numic dialect of Numotejuapo from her patrilineal lines, and the Penanteja dialect I speak fluently today, which is closely related to the oldest dialects of Nahuatlatoli, which are guttural and termed classical Nahuatlatoli, which was brought to Mexico from the Four Corners region of the Southwest into Mexico and now considered a dead language as it was very different than the many variants of non-guttural modern Nahuatlatoli that is commonly spoken in many villages and communities in Mexico today, as well as what is taught in colleges. These individuals as well made false claims, manufactured fake statements, and doctored screenshots, claiming that the GoFundMe page my two relatives started for me was a scam, and that the injury to my leg was not life-threatening, or minor, self-inflicted cuts I did on myself because I am schizophrenic, and that after a brief nine-day stay in the hospital, I was sent home and walking. Yet another shameless and fraudulent lie manufactured by this group simply to garner hatred and malcontent. As you can clearly see on my paperwork, the date I was brought into the trauma center was May 11th, and the date I was released was June 17th. That is close to a month and a half, the majority of which, besides the last nine days of my stay, were in the intensive care ICE trauma ward. If one has any type of medical understanding, one could take one look at my paperwork and understand just how dire and life-threatening this situation was. A malfunctioning power saw nearly cut my right leg in half. And yes, just as my brother Bernie explained, I did have to have 95% of my blood replaced that I had lost, that I had died and had to be revived twice because of this. As you can see on the medical report, trauma surgeons within the first hours had to give me 8 units of packed red blood, 7 units of plasma, And as you can see in the second picture, it clearly states that more than a total blood 100% transfusion on an adult male is defined between 8 and 12 units of packed red blood. I'm a smaller man, I weigh around 145 pounds, and I had to receive 8 units of packed red blood cells the first moments of arriving in the trauma center. And this was the dire state my leg was in upon my discharge and release. Obviously, I could not have been walking around or have walked out of the hospital in the dire state I was in. And as far as the ignorant, racist, and bigoted claims of me being white by non-traditional, non-language speaking people simply because I have light skin and his lies are bullshit. Yes, I am mixed. My biological mother was half native, half white, and my biological father could have been mixed or white. Who knows? But in my culture, 
just as in all traditional indigenous cultures. None of that matters. And what makes me a Chichimeja Piochkate has nothing to do with the genocidal Eurocentric ideals such as blood quantum. What does is the language I speak, the life that I live, the traditional ancient knowledge, customs, traditions, understandings, songs, beliefs, and oral history that belongs to my clans, that I carry, that were passed down to me by my great-grandmother and my granduncle through my matrilineal lines that I keep and use every day living a traditional life on the land, not speaking about it or dressing up in my backyard for TikTok videos, but actually living it. How many of you who have made fraudulent claims against me, claiming I am white or a fraud, can say the same? Can you share with us a response in the language of the culture you purport to claim and represent? Can you even speak the language of the culture you purport to represent and claim and are an expert on? Can you share with us some of your clan's oral history? Do you even know what clans you come from? Can you share with us your clan's songs, hunting songs, pipe packing songs, scalp lock tying songs, death or war songs? Can you share with us any of the traditional knowledge and wisdom that was passed down to you through your lineage? Not what can be found on Google or learned in a Chicano studies class or found in a book. Can you show us how you live your people's traditional life and how to make the traditional instruments necessary to facilitate that traditional life? If you cannot, then you are unqualified to speak on anyone who can, irregardless of how light their eyes or skin are or how much you think you look aesthetically as what you and common Americans believe is indigenous looking, which is as well complete bullshit. I have cousins in Lawton, Oklahoma, and Chihuahua who are not mixed like me, who have light skin, brown hair, and hazel eyes. I've been up north during my work and spoken with traditional language-speaking Mandan, Iroquois, Haida, Tlingit, and Mohawk families who still live on the land traditionally, many of which with very light hair, light skin, and light eyes. Are they not Indian? This level of bigotry and ignorant racist viewpoint that brown skin, brown eyes, and black hair makes you Indian and able to claim to be indigenous, and light hair, light eyes, light skins makes you white, only comes from the typical, ignorant, racist, white American and clueless, non-language speaking, non-traditional people who have no connection to any authentic land-based indigenous community who live in the city and want to claim to be indigenous simply because of the pigment of their skin, hair, and eyes. Because it is simply and sadly the only thing they have. As well, I must address the claims that I am wealthy, that I live in a nice house in New Mexico, are as well another lie by these people. I live in what will be considered by most common Americans abject poverty, in conditions most Americans would consider third world. For the past seven years, I have lived traditionally on the land, completely off-grid, without running water, without electricity, with only a couple solar panels and a small solar battery, enough to charge my phone and laptop. My shelter that I sleep in is an 80-square-foot camper I traded for a knife I made and had to completely rebuild uh, from the inside out to make livable. There's no refrigeration, there's no air conditioning, there's no running water, no toilets here. Can any of you who have made false claims of me being white and fraud or quote-unquote playing dress-up live this way. It seems to be much projecting coming from people who get dressed up, come outside of their air-conditioned houses to put on dance costumes and war paint to take pictures and make videos in their backyard to post on Instagram and TikTok. As well, I must address the claims the TikTok Indian was making in reference to the Nao Ololin, which he called the swastika, claiming that seeing it often on my traditional clothing and adornment I make and wear is proof that I'm mixing what he called Mashika culture with quote-unquote Hindu culture because of the so-called swastika. 
If this individual was not ignorant and completely bereft of any traditional understandings of the authentic culture, beliefs, traditions, customs, language, and basic understandings that is common knowledge among actual members of the culture this individual purports to claim, he would understand that this symbol is not called a swastika and has nothing to do with Nazi Germany or Hinduism. It is called the Nao Ololin and is one of the most sacred symbols in our culture among the Ehecha Tunal Teotlachem Echayot, the lineage or race of the Second Age, and has been carried and held sacred by many tribes, oldest lineages and clans that were here in this continent during first contact, which is well descended from that same lineage of the Second Age. As well, this individual claimed the mixing of Hinduism with what he ignorantly called Mashika culture due to my video sharing traditional insights about the Teowashikli, which is commonly known in Hinduism as chakras, energy portals that correlate with nerve ganglia and the organs of the body that generates one's EMF field or electromagnetic field. Once again, this is false. Knowledge of the Teowashikli or chakras were not exclusive or specific to the Indus Valley and said to have been given to our people by the Kinametsin Wetlachame giants during our initial enslavement in Aztlan during the third age of Atl Tunalteau. And in the dialect I speak is known simply as Teowashikli, but in modern dialects of Nahuatlatoli, commonly spoken in villages around Mexico, these energy portals are commonly referred to as Cuecuello. And here are the private messages and text messages the three women who claimed to be victims of sexual predatism and grooming did not want the public to see that will tell a very different story about the validity of their narrative. Please take some time to watch and carefully read each message. Pause if you need to. When one is at one's very lowest and most vulnerable, unable to defend oneself, People always tend to show their true colors, as many did. This is a blessing. And to the hundreds of women and men whom I have helped and spent countless hours speaking with and spent time in their homes with their families and children, helping teach them to liberate themselves from physical and mental disease and try my best to give back what has been taken from our people and never asking anything in return who did not buy into the lies, I thank you for your support and for your integrity and honor. And as well to those whom have watched and shared my videos and have always supported, I love you. Love is.